Hey, this is Coster, and you're listening to Tobin Tonight. I want to ask you, though, to really start off uh, this conversation is like, what kind of things were you doing today? Because I was interested when you told people to tune into this, you seem like a very kind of down to earth, easy going guy where instead of like, you know, being like, all right, guys, like, give me a green screen. I got to look really good for this <laughs> promo. You're, you were literally like, like, yeah, I'm out here with a buddy. This is taking longer and whatever, but Hey, later yeah. tonight, I'll be free. Hey, let's do it. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I am just a normal, I'm just a normal human being. Like we all are at the end of the day, but I, I live in like the kind of the concrete jungle of, uh, the vancouver area i guess i mean like i'm in surrey but like there's still there's just it's it's a concrete jungle dude so my buddy called me this morning and he was like hey i need to go get my car out from uh abbotsford which is kind of like in the outskirts uh lots of uh lots of trees and stuff like that so any opportunity that i have i'm a small town boy myself like that's where i grew up so any opportunity that i have to get out of here a bit i just i jump on that immediately and uh, it's, it's a beautiful day out so you know what kind of things do you like, I guess, about compare like the small town side of things compared to the city? Because like I've only ever grown up in cities. Now, right. I, I grew up in like Newfoundland. So like it still feels kind of rural compared to like the rest of Canada, where it's almost like you mentioned you're from Newfoundland. They're like, yeah, where, where are you two? I'm like, oh, that island all the way out there. On yeah. The side, yeah. Like, so anything that happens in Canada, it's almost like this doesn't affect me on my own island. But then when I went to Ottawa, I was kind of like, this is a city, but then you have, it's like, it's never enough. Cause then you're in Ottawa going like compared to Newfoundland, this is a city. And then people in Toronto are like, Oh, this is not a city. This is just like, and I'm just like, shut up to me. It's a city. Can you just let I know, me I know, it's, I know. It's, yeah. I know exactly like the feeling. Cause I grew up in a town called Burns Lake. All right. 3000 people. So actually originally I moved, my parents immigrated from Switzerland when I was five years old. So I was born in Switzerland. Oh, so okay. dual citizenship. It's great stuff. But uh, I grew up in a little place called Burns Lake, BC. Yeah, very small, 3,000 people, maybe like 10,000 surrounding area. But the closest city, I guess, I wouldn't even, I don't know if today I would call it a city, but Prince George. <laughs> Do you know Prince George, BC? Yeah, my so my brother, when he had a job, well, I was going to say when he had a job, he still has a job. But like, at one point, he lived in McBride, BC. So right it's not too like in my mind it's not too far he would be able to tell me how the long distance but i remember he would have to go to prince george on certain occasions to get like groceries or certain things i'm like it's quite a haul it's yeah it's definitely a haul but that was like the city where i yeah. kind of would go as like as a growing up as a kid and then after burns lake pretty much like a week after high school i moved to Kelowna to go to audio engineering school because i was just like i want to do music and i have no idea where to go from here and then going from Burns Lake to Kelowna was like crazy. Like it's the same thing. Kelowna to me was like a city. I was like, this is crazy. And then uh, 2017, I moved to Vancouver, and then I was like, this is a city. This, like, is, this is yeah. Kelowna to me now is kind of like a mediocre middle. It's like a town, a large town, honestly. But it's funny. It's funny how that narrative changes as you kind of hop up. I want to ask you, because you mentioned about obviously getting into the music side and yeah. going into, was it audio engineering you mentioned? Yeah, yeah, that's the course I took. So like, what made you kind of get interested in the music side of things? Because like, listen, I'm like 16 at the time and I was watching Conan O'Brien and I was like, oh, I want to do like late night TV. But right. I just didn't know how to go about that. But like, did you have that vision when you were going to like university that I'll do this and then I'll figure it out from here? I think I always wanted to be an artist and that started out from like a pretty young age. I think like much music kind of really got me into being in bands and stuff. Like in a small town, there's like four people you can play music with. You play one, there's not even a bar to play in Burns Lake. Um, so I knew I had to get out of Burns Lake. I think I just took the audio engineering program because I don't know if you remember in like senior year high school, they have all like all the colleges that come by to your high school. I don't know if they did that to you and they kind of like do their little setup. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, the, the school that I ended up going to, they did a little one there, and they had, like, flyers and stuff for the audio engineering program, and it just looked pretty cool, just, like, studio production and stuff, and, like, I knew I wanted to be able to kind of record my own stuff. Like, I'd been messing around with it, but I had no idea what I was doing, but I think I always went with the intention that I was going to be the artist at the end of the day. I think it was just kind of, like, almost, in a way, an excuse to get out of town, to go to Kelowna and, like, start the journey, if that makes any sense. 
Oh, absolutely. Obviously, you come kind of come from the artist point of view or the background. Like I was never the artsy kid in high school. Like it's funny because when you look back at it, I'm I kind of want to look back and see what the kids today in high school what their kind of um, yeah. styles are because I know when I was going in high school, it was like there was like the emos, there was like yeah. the goths, there was the punk rockers, there was like the preps, and I was kind of like not into any of that. I was just. I, I feel that i feel that in a way too maybe i was the stoner i don't know yeah. maybe i was the stoner i was probably the stoner but like yeah. i also kind of just like mingled with most groups as well like i you know what i mean well, I, wasn't... I i tried my best to mingle but then at the same point it's like <laughs> i was just still like all right i i can kind of associate with the hockey player because i like hockey i like right. basketball players sure but like it came to a point because you're high school you're kind of young where it's like dude just pick a lane what are you going to do? Are you, yeah. you going to be with the hockey guys? But I'm just like, why, why does it have to be that way? Can I just be nice to all of you, but somehow you shit on me because I didn't choose something. So I, I felt that even from the small town point of view of going to a local university and people right. are like, you're out of high school now. And I'm like, yeah, if you live in a big city, I'm like, I feel like this is just a bigger high school where people are like, uh, yeah, so now we have the crowd from the Ghouls, Mount Pearl, and CBS, and we all hate Brian. I'm like, you don't even know me yet, but I know the guy that went to school with you. He didn't like you, so now collectively I don't like you either. I'm like, I, I was like, I got to go. I got to go somewhere else where people don't know who I am. <laughs> right. It's funny because, like, in a way for me, I feel like once high school ended, all of those, like, clicks kind of – I mean, like, a lot of people still stay together that I know, yeah. like, in their friend groups or whatever, but, like, I don't – like, there's nobody that I really – hate anymore there's people back in the day that i would like i never would, would want to hang out with them in high school but like if i saw them now like i think we'd be we'd be cool yeah i don't know it's it's definitely a weird a weird thing going through high school just like discovering who you are i know like the emo scene is kind of back in a way right now but it's like i'm okay i'm okay with that like i, yeah. I mean at, like at first like i know growing up when so i think like for me I used to think watching some similar to what you said with watching much music. That's how I kind of got into music or into acts. And I remember being at my friend's house one time and I think it was like a much music video awards and uh fallout boy had won an award. And I was so upset that fallout boy had won because I was so used to, you know, your normal people winning it. And right. then like, it was the strangest of things because out of nowhere, his mother who doesn't watch any of this bullshit came in and was like, Ryan, you can't be upset in order for like new artists to be made. And I was just like, hold on, Ryan, why is your mother talking to me as if like, I'm like some kind of mental person that it's like, yeah, <laughs> we need, we need to calm Brian down because I'm worried that he's going to like break things. And I'm like, no, I'm just upset that like, I don't know who the fuck fallout boy is and they win. And then three years later you go to my iPod and it's like, and... Just, I'll follow boy because that's how I started to get exposed. I'm like, all right. They actually don't sound that bad. But then you had like My Chemical Romance, Boys Like Girls. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm on this trend. But then people were like, well, you don't dress like an emo. You don't have like the arm sleeves. I'm like, is it okay if I listen to it though? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, you don't got to dress like, I don't know, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't got to fully commit to love it. Yeah. Like, it's like, at I least mean. let's put it this way. When you're getting beat up because you're listening to it, I am trying to help you by saying, listen, I listen to it too. Just, I don't, and they're like, you don't wear the clothes. I'm like, all right, you're on your own, Ryan. Yeah. I can't help you. Yeah. You, you committed too much to this part. I just like the music. I don't know, man. Some people just go a little far with it, but you know, to each their own, to each their own. I guess yeah. uh, the emo scene was like a big commitment because you needed like the haircut and like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, the, uh, yeah, it's. There's really there's cool. a generation out there on like TikTok and Instagram that like scroll through that and just don't yeah. understand it. And then it just hits me hard because it's like I don't was never into it, but like I'm like, oh yeah, I remember my friend was it. like yeah. this. But like I think there was one that and I don't know how it was done, but on Instagram someone has a dog that has like the 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 haircut that they have. <laughs> And then, uh, and then they like voices over where it's like, tonight is the night I fall in love with you. And I was just like, uh, don't know the song, remember the song. And yeah, I remember that that's the kind of look that you had. You also had the converse, the tight jeans. Oh, it's a look. But now when you see like Machine Gun Kelly, Travis Barker, Avril Lavigne kind of all team up and making decent and good music that I will listen to, I'm like, 
yeah, you go. You bring this back for the next quarter. Honestly, honestly, man, it could not be a better time for me because like a lot of my music has inflections of that, I guess. Just watching that scene kind of come back, I'm just like, yeah. It kind of gives that. you hope where it's kind of like, okay, it's not really dead. There are people that are going to go out and listen to it. Compared to like, and no offense to people who do like it, but if someone just came out tomorrow, I'm like, I'm bringing jazz back. I'd be like, mm. you, you kind of really need someone that's like famous right now that's really into it to kind yeah. of, yeah, like Bruno, yeah, and Bruno and that's Mars. like a different audience too, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I feel like this pop punk realm or emo, whatever, whatever you really want to call yeah, it, yeah. it's like it really appeals to the younger generation because everybody's like, I'm hurting life sucks and then you know what i mean they're like yeah we connect with that there's like i feel like it's like a light it's like a life cycle for like any kind of music like for me i'll, I'll give them the example because i know they won't take it offense but it's like for simple plan for example mm -hmm. i was younger welcome to my life untitled i was like oh i was like Do they relate to me <laughs> and when i was got when i got older i was just like why are they still writing songs like i'm 12 i don't get this bro it's like, like yeah. And then it would come back again when they came out with like rest. I think it's like a rest of my life or this, this is the rest of us and stuff. And I was like, I'm in university and I'm like, Oh, simple plan. They, they still get me. It's like, <laughs> they never not got you. You just kind of got in your head that it was for 12 year olds. Like, yeah. It's the nostalgic appeal, but also at the same time, like I feel like an artist needs to grow in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Blink 182. I'm sorry, but like they're holding on to something that just isn't quite there anymore. And that's why I'm happy that like Travis is kind of branching out and doing all this other cool stuff yeah. with other artists. But like where Blink-182 is right now is like, I'm like, boys, like you're not 20 anymore. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. you gotta like, yeah, like maybe grow up a little bit in that sense, like especially musically. But uh, I mean, like a band like Sum 41 is doing it. Like their yeah. new album is like very, it's not really pop punk. It's more... It's a little hard, heavier on that sense, and it's kind of just, I don't know, the lyrics are a little more grown up, I guess you could say. I feel like everyone has to go through that transition. Like, I know for the most part, people like to kind of, like, when a band breaks up, you want to see them come back, but you're kind of like, yeah, I like your classics, but can you kind of update it? You mentioned about Sum 41. Now, you team up with someone that is a part of Sum 41. Tell us a little bit more about that and how that came to be, because... As a, I'm sure as a child, you listen to Sum 41 thought like the greatest shit ever. And now when you get to team up with them or even be a part of this process, you're kind of like, Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, in a way. Um, well, it's actually kind of like, it's kind of a weird story. Sum 41, yes, was one of my first like early favorite bands that really got me into music. And I think part of the reason was they just kind of seemed like the dudes that weren't popular in high school, but they just didn't give a fuck. And that's kind of like why I loved Sum 41 so much. But um, I actually never personally had a chance to see them live until two years ago. I think it was 2019 or 2020, right before that pandemic. Yeah, it was 2019 still. And we went to play, my old band went to play a couple shows with a band called The Lazies. The lead singer of that band is now kind of like one of my managers. Um, and I just work really closely with him. But uh, they were opening for Sum 41 the last night of that tour and we we weren't playing that night but they basically just asked me to guitar tech for them and i remember i met cone briefly backstage you know just kind of shot the shit or whatever and then later that night we all like went and party in a hotel room and i was like i was pretty fucked up man <laughs> but cone cone came to the hotel room and i remember like being in there being like man like i would love to like ask cone if he would want to work with me but i just feel like it's not the right time. And if there's a right time, it's not going to be now. And I avoided yeah. it. I avoided it all night, which was like a hard thing to do because like, I usually like really I seize the opportunity when I have it, but I knew it was just the wrong time. I didn't ask them. And then I ended up seeing them literally like three weeks later again, live. And it was like the first two times in my life, which was crazy. Anyways, a year goes by. I'm still working with Leon from the lazies quite a bit. Like we're writing songs and stuff together. And he basically, knows cone personally that's how the lazies open for some 41 okay. and he suggested that cone like produce produce our music essentially and then yeah he basically set up a call all three of us jumped on like a zoom call i guess leon had sent him some of the demos that we were working on and one of the songs that i had situational cone for basically the first thing cone said to me was like bro like i wake up and i sing that song in my head all the time and it just like kind of blew my mind because i was like what like the guy yeah, from yeah. some 41 he's like he's singing my song so that was pretty crazy but it, it i don't know it just kind of came full circle and i feel like 
had I approached him in that in that uh, after party, all fucked up, it would have been like a total different story. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it, it, it like for as matter as people, like there are people out there that say first impressions matter. People out there that say don't matter about first impression. Like I'm one of those people that it's 50 50 like a first impression sometimes matters but to me i'm always yeah. like i'm always like hey who knows what what they were going through on your first impression they could be like the highest of highs and come across super cheerful and then the rest yeah. of the time you know them they're kind of like an ass or okay. vice versa where they're an ass the first time yeah. you meet them and then the rest of the time you're like the first time i met you you seem like such an asshole but like yeah because i went through this this and this on the same day you're like understood I got exactly. it. Exactly. And that's why that's why I hate when people are like, oh, this this famous person like that I talked to for 30 seconds was a dick to me. So they're obviously a dick their whole lives. <laughs> like, no. Like they live a life. Something might have happened. Like you're there for how long of their of the conversation? Like it's uh, I don't know. First impressions are situational. If it's on like a business standpoint, like in the sense that I approach Cone with, like Yeah. Personally, I wouldn't want to do that while I'm all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? he, like, he like he just like instantly sees the face remembers the occasion exactly like, you know, yeah yeah i think it's like with, with you because i was actually kind of interested to mention this story is when i seen on instagram you followed this podcast and then i think i followed back i was like all right let's uh let's see what his personality's like so then i like sent you like a weird voice message at like 2 30 <laughs> my time and i was like <laughs> he's like he's either going to reply and go what the hell did natasha set me up with or he's going to reply and say yeah man I'm, I'm super excited to do this interview or podcast and then i was like either way i will take it if he came back and was like what the fuck dude i would have been like, all right <laughs> i feel like yeah i mean i kind of appreciate when people reach out to me personally anyways it's like even like right that's something that like cones taught me too like cone Cone will basically reply to like every message that he still gets to this day. You know what I mean? Like, or he'll at least take a look at it. And like, yeah. I don't know. He's just a very, uh, he's a very humble superstar. And he's, he's kind of like, people say don't meet your heroes, but like, he's like the one that serves to be good in that sense. Honestly, he's just such a humble human being. I want to ask you, of course, now doing your own music, you were one time in a band called the Fallaways, I believe. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about like how you ended up doing this into wanting to be your own solo act because I've listened to some of the music for the Fallaways and in my mind I listen to music and I'm like man I feel like I'm in like a Tony Hawk video game. <laughs> yeah, totally. I could see that being the vibe for sure. But yeah, honestly, the the, the goal was to do the Fallaways. You know what I mean? That was like that was the plan. And like growing up, it was always like I want to be playing in a band because a band is kind of like my family and like it just kind of keeps this this vibe and I also just thought I was never good enough to really do it on my own but basically most of the guys or all the guys in the, in the band basically quit back in June and kind of left me with an ultimatum of either giving <laughs> in and just being like that's it <laughs> or yeah, just yeah, like, being like being like fuck it I'll do this shit on my own and at yeah. the end of the day no offense to any of them but like I always put at least double the work into the band you know what i mean i got us all the opportunities like working with cone and all that stuff and like i wrote 90 percent of the songs so it, it it was kind of a blessing in disguise i feel like because now i can really i mean maybe in a way i was just kind of scared to do the solo thing on my own but like now i've had no no option and i'm just like well, just, i gotta do it i gotta try yeah i mean like now i got like this awesome team behind me like i got cone behind me i got like management i got the ladies at, at looters that, that i work with all the time and just, i've already got like a fan base basically built up from when i was in the followers yeah. so in in that sense like it's it's really kind of a blessing in disguise it's kind of brought me to this point too i mean like i'm 27 now when the band kind of broke up i was 20 26 and it, i was kind of leading up to a point where i was like okay hey, life has been going like pretty good for a while i feel like there's got to be like one big bump somewhere before before things really go to the next level and i like i truly felt yeah. like that for a while and like i feel like life is just kind of like that in general um this 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 is the bump this, this podcast is, this is, is the bump, bump. No, no. this is the this bump. is this, this is, is the part <laughs> yeah, this is the part where it's like this podcast is the bump where it's like 
hey, like I was doing so well. I went on and this guy's podcast <laughs> and now it's down here. And then it, you'll go by on someone else's and then go right back up. And then it's just like, all right, Tobit, I, I don't know what happened, but like we're going downhill. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is it. It's all downhill yeah. from here, boys. No, honestly, bro, like the last six months of my life was pretty rough. Just kind of getting back like mentally and like with the pandemic and everything, in a way, it probably happened in the best time. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't, I didn't feel like it was like a race to like get, get uh, things going, but I just had time to do it properly. I mean, like I said, with like having a team behind me and stuff, it just gave me the confidence to not really give a fuck about the past and just worry about the future. Like just being a musician in general, man, there's so many people that tell you you can't all the time or tell you like, you don't fit into this, you don't fit into that. And it's just like, you gotta put all that bullshit aside or use it as fuel and just like pave your own way. And it's kind of what I've done. Yeah. I also think sometimes now it's a different kind of landscape too. Cause I find now, like we, we kind of went in when you said finding artists on much music or like listening to much music, like that yeah. was me back in the day. I would listen to that and be like, all right, like there's no more Baxter boys or Britney Spears. Who's this third eye blind. And I'd be like, all right, cool. They're cool too. But that's how you kind of got into music. Yep. But now it's kind of the landscape has changed in terms of social media. It's changed and so much. Like I, I can go on Instagram and if someone has like a paid sponsored ad and some, sometimes they're like really good. Sometimes you're like, I, I don't know why I'm seeing this. Like what happened to my <laughs> algorithm? But like, this is irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. Like, like some of it, you're kind of like, all right, like I can see how that would be my interest and other stuff. I'm like, how did you wind up here? Like, I'll be honest, there are like a lot of acts in the UK that come across my Instagram. I don't know why, don't know how. Maybe someday I was on a UK hunt and right. I was like, everything from the UK I liked. But like, there are bands like the Larkins out there. There's, I think, a girl named uh, Griffy or Griff. And I wouldn't have known about it only for an Instagram ad. And I gave it like the 30 seconds to listen to like, that's it of their song. Right. Like, they sound decent. Um, to me, like even you reach out to their PR and they're like, kind of like, they're not like over the moon of being like shoving it down your throat. They're kind of like, Oh, like, tell me how you found them out. And I was like, Oh, like an Instagram ad, but Larkins to me sounded like 1975 and yeah. you know, that's going to be the next wave. Like if they become something, you're kind of like, Oh yeah, I had them on before they were Larkins. So it, it is interesting. Cause even with Canadian acts, like I know you're out West. So like. You know, I'm sure at one point Mariana's Trench wasn't Mariana's Trench. And like we had Maddie Olds on and there are people that know who Maddie Olds is from out West or people I know in Canada. Is. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> I did not know until like someone had remixed a song and then I was like, sounds good. And then I struggled to find it because Instagram does this thing where it's like, ah, you didn't like it right away. Now you'll never find it again. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, yeah. I was like, you're so mean. And then uh, I found it and I was like, all right, cool. Now I have to make sure that I don't lose it. But I feel like there is an audience out there, like for you, for example, like if you go on your Instagram, Twitter, have you had people that come across and be like, oh, like this came across my timeline or I stumbled across it and this sounds great. Because let's look at the social media can be positive and negative. We're focusing on the positive. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can definitely be both. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I definitely have. I remember, well, like more so in like the, the followers because we haven't really ran any, like I haven't technically yeah. released anything as Coster yet. Yeah. But yeah, with the followers, I remember when we released a song called Dumb, we put like a fair amount of like ads on it and just kind of like targeted people that would maybe like like Green Day, uh, Sum 41, just kind of like bands like that, Fiddler. And we actually had quite a bit of random people like see that ad and like message us directly and be like, yo, this is actually like really good. And like they'd started following us and like a lot of those people still follow me today. And you know, like remember there's this one guy, Braden from I think a uh, Winnipeg band called panic land although i think they just changed their name but they're actually pretty big and like him and i kept in contact quite a bit and uh yeah it's kind of cool when that happens but uh yeah i guess there, there's definitely positives and negatives <laughs> yeah oh yeah trust me i i tell people all the time as a joke and then there are people that don't know how to react to that joke but like when you go on like apple Podcasts, whatever and then you see reviews i think i have like one review from someone from a year ago and it's like uh he has really good acts on, but they deserve better. The host is a total schmuck. It's like, you know, like, it's like, it's like he doesn't even try. It's like, you know, these acts deserve better. And then I'm like, I used to think, cause again, it's all in your mind. So I was like, Oh my God, how the fuck do I delete this? So no one else sees it. And now I'm kind of like, 
that doesn't and Brian, embrace, yeah, like Brian, it. that that doesn't sound like something you would do. Like, why do you want people to be not voiced? And I was like, yeah. that's fair. Um, and then there was a part of me that's like, you know what? How can you use that then for your own promo? And I was like, mm, clever. So like sometimes <laughs> if I'm doing a sometimes if I'm doing a promo and you know aim low, I'll be like. Like, hey, this is Tobin from Tobin Tonight, the podcast where apparently I'm a schmuck and the guest deserves better. If you think I'm a schmuck, listen in and find for yourself. And then people will be like, yeah, I'm going to listen in because I totally think he's a schmuck. And I'm like, boom, I got a new listener. <laughs> Dude, honestly, like embrace it. Yeah, embrace it from all angles. Like, I, I know there's people out there that have hate for Coster, but like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, you yeah. want to talk about it? Like, let's talk about it. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt my feelings. There's going to be people like that regardless. And at the end of the day, you know, any publicity is good publicity. Right, Tobin? Yeah, exactly. I feel like, I feel like when I'm on like Instagram and stuff, I feel, you know, I feel like we're a generation that grew up on like MSN. We're like the typical first ones for oh, Facebook, dude, I guess. MSN. Right? Oh yeah. My God. So it was so easy back in the day to just like, if you didn't like someone, you block them, but you, yeah. or the, the thing that would annoy everyone, a pair offline online, a pair offline online, and they'd keep on showing it up on your computer. And then you just mm -hmm. try to message them. It wouldn't go through. Yeah. But we are basically, I call it like the Brad Marchant era of generation where it's almost like <laughs> we were the original rats, but there's a younger generation out there now that are like on TikTok and Instagram. And as soon as they get that first hate message, it destroys them. I get hate messages on Instagram where like, I will say LeBron James isn't actually that great. I like Kobe. And then someone will come at my podcast and be like, you suck as a host. I'm like, what does it have to do with anything of the argument? But there would be like a younger generation that's like, oh, I'm destroyed. That's done. I'm like, that is a random person in Iowa. Who cares? <laughs> and, and real talk, dude, I think social media has like just impacted us so negatively. You know what I mean? Like it just yeah. gives people something to hide behind and like say things that they would never say in person. And it's just kind of, I don't know. I feel like it's self-destructive in a way. But uh, honestly, everybody who talks shit on social media, it's kind of their problem. Oh, I, I do it on both ends. I'll talk shit. And then at, the same, <laughs> at the same point, then I'll be like offended that someone came at me. It's almost like someone's just like, this is a dance I did the other day. And I'm like, that dance sucks. And then they'll be like, your interview sucks. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. How dare you yeah. say my interview yeah, sucks? <laughs> oh, it's yeah. classic. Well, at least I'm honest about it. There are people out hey, there man. that would be like, that. no, I don't do that. And someone sends a screenshot to you and you'd be like, all right, fuck. Yeah. At I least I'm like, at least if someone sends me a screenshot and was like, you're a bully. I'm like, I know. I have admitted to being a bully. Like, don't. <laughs> are you a bully though, or are you a troll? You know what I mean. Ah, like, that's fair. But I, I guess like, like, what's the what's the difference really? Because nobody can really tell on the internet. I feel anyway. like I feel like a bully would constantly do it, where a troll kind of just waits for the reaction, and then once he got yeah. the reaction, he just kind of he or she just kind of buzzes off. Equal opportunity around here, ladies. You can be <laughs> trolls too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to close out the to close out the the chat, I mean, I thought it was really uh, entertaining. We went through a whole lot of things, but obviously, yeah. I'll let you have your last word. Tell people more about March seventeenth. You're going to be in Toronto. Tell them more about that for the crowd that are going to be in the city and be like, "Hey, I like this interview, this chat. Uh, what does he else? What he what what else does he want me to know?" Um, okay, so March 17th, I'm playing my debut show, full band show as Coster, at the Bovine Sex Club in Toronto, and it's going to be quite the trip, you know, we're going from, I'm basically bringing five, four dudes from the West Coast, we're going all the way to Toronto, and uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting, Cone's going to be there, Cone might come play a song with us on stage, maybe, um, he hasn't given me a definitive answer, but I kind of like that, it keeps it open-ended, yeah, yeah. um, he's like, if they suck, I'm leaving, I'm out, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want um, any part of this, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah I'm done, Cone left, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I have a reputation set. here, <laughs> exactly, um, no, it should be a good night, it's essentially like an industry show showcase, so there's going to be a lot of, um, uh people out from like from labels and stuff like that uh, i think ralph from uh, apa agency who is booking for like most of the bigger acts in canada here is going to be there so i want to impress him um and yeah we've just i've just i put together like i think the best set that i've ever kind of had and i'm really excited for it i've even like set up like a sick little intro my got my buddy to like produce a little intro for it and uh it's gonna be pretty hilarious but um yeah it's good i'm really looking forward to it and you should come out 
That's going to do it for this episode of Tobin Tonight. Our thanks to Coster for coming on to the show. Remember, you can find past, present, and future episodes on TobinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying, thank you for listening, and good night.